Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here back again with another Madden 18 predictor video for week four. Guys, today we're going to do is go through all of the predictor set options. We're going to try and predict them as well as we can. We've got a lot of information now because of inactives and things like that. That's why I like to wait until Sunday mornings to do these. So hopefully you guys will follow along with me and try and figure them out Saturday night, Sunday mornings. I think that's the best way to do it personally. So uh, let's start off by taking a look at the first ones here. We've got the Titans at the Texans for the result. Titans win by at least two points. I do think the Titans are going to win this one. I think that the Texans are kind of headed in the wrong direction, to be honest with you. So uh, let's go with true for this one. I think that they'll probably win by somewhere between four to eight points, somewhere in that range. So I think the Titans are a pretty good one in this one. Now, granted, they're only a one-point favorite in a lot of Vegas booking, but they're also a two-point favorite. So it's kind of right along that line. It's it's hard to really predict that one very well. Now, this one, DeAndre Hopkins has seven-plus receptions. Now, I will say this. DeAndre Hopkins is the kind of guy that certainly can get seven receptions in a game. But keep in mind that if he catches seven receptions in every game, just in, as an example... That would mean that he is going to get 112 catches on the season. I just don't think that you can bet that a guy is going to get seven or more receptions in a game in any game, quite honestly, regardless of who it is. So I have to go false on this one. Again, I think Hopkins is the kind of guy that certainly can do it. I'm just not quite sure that he is probably going to do it in this one. So uh, let's keep going. Jaguars win by at least four points. This one's a little tougher, honestly. Again, we're still pretty much looking at the Vegas line on this. The Jaguars kicked the absolute crap out of the Ravens last week, and I do think that the Ravens are a better team than the Jets are. Now, granted, that one was over in England, but I am going to say that they're going to be able to get it done here against the Jets. Jets are a pretty trash team at this point, to be honest with you, although they actually played better last week than they had been. Now we've got Jaguars at Jets for Javon, or Javon, Jermaine Curse, uh, and this one is catching one or more touchdown. Now, if there is a guy in this offense that I think is going to catch a touchdown, it's probably going to be Jermaine Curse. But to predict that, I, I don't think he has a better than 50% chance of doing it. So I'm going to say false on this. I'm pretty much always going to predict false for almost anybody scoring a touchdown in most weeks, unless it's a quarterback, to be honest with you. Um, there are certain situations where I'll, where I'll maybe predict an individual running back or an individual wide receiver or something like that to score, but probably not with a guy like Jermaine Curse. He, he just doesn't have that upside. So now we've got Patriots and the Panthers. Now this one is a more interesting one because it's a nine point spread. Now the Patriots, of course, are going to be the favorite. If we were just purely predicting that they're going to win this game, I think it would be pretty darn easy to predict that they're probably going to get it done. The Vegas odds are actually with Carolina not beating this uh, this um, this spread. They think that it's going to be a ten or a more point spread. Man. This is actually one of the tougher ones, to be honest with you, but I am actually going to go with true. I think that the Patriots are pretty much going to just run all over the Panthers. When I say run, I, I guess actually pass all over them. I don't think that the Panthers are going to be able to stop them. So we've got Tom Brady now having three plus combined passing or rushing touchdowns. And again, I just did predict that they're probably going to be able to pass all over them. Now, what's unfortunate is that you never quite know what's going to happen. The Patriots could get down to the one yard line throwing the ball four different times in a game and they could run it in every single time from the one yard line so you never know what's going to happen the Patriots aren't a team that's going to go out there and actually just give the ball and allow Brady just to get his numbers that's really not what they do they take what the defense is willing to give them but I do think that he's going to be able to throw for three touchdowns in this one so if the first thing happens with them winning by 10 or more or I guess nine or more I do think that Brady is also going to throw the three or more touchdowns now onto the Lions and the Vikings now, the Lions have actually been playing pretty well, and I think the interesting matchup here is to see what Golden Tate's able to do against this defense. He's not going to be lined up against Xavier Rhodes. Uh, I don't see that happening. Rhodes is probably going to be still playing on the outside, so I, I'm not overly concerned about that. Stephon Diggs, though, against um, Darius Slay. That's going to be an interesting one if that ends up happening, but the Vikings like to move him all over the field too, and same thing with Adam Thielen, so that's a pretty interesting one. This game is obviously very, very close. The Vikings are at home, which is why this game is an even one. I, I, I Man, this is such a tough one, to be honest with you. I think I'm going to go with 
the Vikings winning this thing. So I am going to say that they are going to get this one done. I'm going to say true on this. This is, like I said, a really tough one, though. I would not be surprised if the Lions do win this game. So uh, let's go on to the next game here. Case or The next one here, Case Keenum having two or more passing touchdowns and no interceptions. The and no interceptions is going to be make it a false for me. Not that I think he's necessarily going to throw a, a, an interception or anything, but the fact that it could be either of those things, either an interception or him not throwing two or more passing touchdowns, I think there's a good chance that that happens. I think that one is pretty easy to, pr to predict, honestly. The Lions defense isn't particularly good, but still, case it's Case Keenum. You know, granted, he did have a good game last week, but still. Falcons beating the Bills by at least nine points. Another one where you have to assume that the that the Falcons are going to go out there and pretty much kick the crap out of the Bills, but I am going to actually say false on this one, just because I think that the Bills are the type of defense that could actually like, not necessarily win this game for them, but keep the game closer than nine points. I mean, that's a big spread, guys. That's a really, really big spread. So I think that I'm, I'm going to slightly predict that they don't quite get there. I still think it'll probably be like six or seven or something like that, though. Falcons defense having two or more sacks. Now, this one is a little bit difficult to predict as well because you could see all kinds of different things happening in this game. The Falcons defense isn't really that great, but they do have some decent pass rushers. So two isn't really that difficult in an entire game. So I am going to say true on this one. Again, if we think that they're going to go out and actually win this game by a pretty decent margin, then that probably means that the Bills are going to have to pass quite a bit. And towards the end of a game, I think that's where they'll probably be able to accumulate those two or more sacks. Steelers at Ravens. Steelers win by at least three. Now, last week, we saw the Jaguars absolutely murder, again, the Ravens. That was in London, so it's a little bit fluky in my opinion. But I still think that the Steelers have to be the favorite in this one, even though they haven't really been playing that well, to be honest. They they have not beaten the teams that they should have by a wide wider margin. Um, I mean, we really haven't seen them have that big breakout offensive performance. And the Ravens' defense, their secondary, has played really well, other than last week, of course. Now, granted, I, I think that that was just a, a kind of, a, like, I, like I said, a fluky thing. But... I don't really like it that much. Um, I don't really love that pick, but you know you got to make it. I think, in my opinion, here the Steelers. I think do win by three or more. Steelers now uh, shutting down Joe Flacco, 250 or more passing yards, and one or more touchdowns. Now one is not that difficult. 250 yards against the Steelers defense. Steelers defense, although it's Pittsburgh and everybody thinks about Pittsburgh being an amazing defense, they're really not that great at this point. So this one is really, really tough. One or more passing touchdowns. I think he'll get that done. Will he get the 250 yards? That's the real question, in my opinion. Um, Flacco's not a guy who typically throws for a ton of yards, but I'm still going to say true on this one. I think that he is going to be able to get 250 passing yards and a touchdown. I almost pressed false there. We do want true. So we'll choose true on that one. Joe Flacco, again, not a great quarterback, but he is somebody that can at least get 250 yards passing. Bengals at Browns. Bengals by three. Now, the Browns last week, man, they were the favorite against the Jets, and they didn't get the job done. Like, it's just it's a very, very odd situation here in Cleveland. I mean, this team just continually doesn't get any better. So I am going to say that the Bengals are going to be able to win by at least three. The Bengals have been terrible, though, so far this season. So I wouldn't be surprised if somehow Cleveland does win this game. But, man, Cleveland looks just trash, to be completely honest. So I, I'm not going to predict them to hardly do anything. Andy Dalton having 300 or more passing yards and two or more touchdowns. 300 passing yards is a lot for Andy Dalton, folks. It really is. Um, I do think the two passing touchdowns is pretty achievable. The fact that it's an or, I think, makes it more achievable for him because he could either throw for 300 yards or two or more touchdowns. Two or more touchdowns can happen kind of in a fluky way sometimes, and 300 passing yards, it's not really that easy for him, but I am going to say true on this one just because the or makes it so much more achievable because he doesn't have to do both of them like some of the other ones that we've seen so far. So make sure that you're watching that and, and really paying attention to the words that it says because and and or are very, very different from one another when you're doing these predictors. 
Cowboys win by at least nine. Now, the Cowboys have not been a team that has been blowing anybody out, really. Um, they did win fairly convincingly against the Cardinals last week, but defensively, they look terrible. And honestly, the Rams look a lot better on offense. Even as a Cowboys fan, I don't think that they win this one by nine or more. So I'm going to say false on that one. Although the point spread has shifted from like 10 all the way down to six. So I think that um, uh, my opinion, again, I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, the Cowboys do not get that one done. Des Bryant having six or more receptions or 100 or more yards. Now, six or more receptions for a guy like Des Bryant shouldn't be that difficult, but he has not had a game, I don't think, this season where he has six receptions, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a game with 100 more receiving yards either. However, I do think that giving him the opportunity to do either of those things is going to be a yes for me. Um, I wish there was one like that said, like, is he going to score a touchdown? Because Dez is that dude at the end zone, man. In the red zone, Dez is maybe the best receiver in the NFL. Maybe the best, best receiver in the NFL over the past, like, 10 seasons. Seriously, I mean, obviously, you can go back to, like, Randy Moss in, in his prime in, like, New England in, like, 2007-ish. And that's right around the 10-year mark. But other than him and maybe Calvin Johnson, and Calvin had some years where he didn't get a ton of touchdowns either. I think that Des Bryant's maybe the best red zone receiver, so I wish it had touchdown, but maybe that's why they didn't, because that would just make it too easy. Eagles win by at least 10 points over the Chargers. Hmm. Chargers are 0-3 right now. So this one is pretty difficult um, to predict. I actually think the Chargers could win this game, though. I, I just feel like the Chargers are so much better than what their record says. They've been losing games in just kind of fluky fashion. So I am going to actually, oh wait, did I actually pick shit? I didn't mean to do that. Crap. Pay closer attention, folks. Pay closer attention. I meant to choose false for that one. I'm a dumbass. Damn it. I'm so pissed. Oh, well. Oh, well. Maybe I'll get that one right just out of a fluke possibility. All right. So Keenan Allen is a guy that I really, really like in this matchup. The Eagles secondary has not been playing well this season, and Keenan Allen's maybe one of my top five wide receivers for fantasy this week. So seven or more receptions is very achievable for a guy like him. I wouldn't predict that he's going to do that on its own, but add in the fact that he could get a touchdown, and I am going to say true on this one. Um, damn it, I wish I would have been able to press false, so I could have, but I was too dumb. So we'll choose true on that one. I'm frustrated at myself for doing that. Damn it. I'm, I'm like doing a video where I'm telling people what to do for predictors and then I don't even do the right thing myself. Buccaneers win by four or more points. Ah, uh, the Giants are trash, aren't they? I mean, the Giants are really, really trash. Let's be honest here. Thankfully, I, I love the fact that the Giants are trash, but a four point gap is not that easy. It really isn't. The Giants haven't really been getting blown out in games, so I'm going to go ahead and choose false. They could win this one, honestly, but they're on the road. They're, I don't think that's going to happen. But you never know. Odell Beckham could have one of those games where he just absolutely explodes and takes over the game. I would love to see that at some point for my fantasy teams, but I love the fact that Giants look terrible this year as a Cowboys fan, to be honest with you. So uh, Jameis Winston having 300 passing yards or two-plus passing touchdowns. Now, the 300 passing yards against this Giants secondary is not going to be easy. Jameis does pass the ball quite a bit, though, and they really don't have a great running game right now with Doug Martin still suspended for this week. Um, he was supposed to be back for this game originally, which is kind of interesting, but they have to pass the ball quite a bit. So 300 passing yards or two or more touchdowns, I'm going to go ahead and say yes on this one. Um, Winston, again, is a guy that can put up some big numbers from time to time, so I think we got to go true here. I've been doing true a lot more for these than I did at the beginning of the season. I think I chose false mostly going pretty much across the board before they had some of these more, uh, like the, the, uh, what are they called? The point spreads and things like that. At the beginning, it was pretty much just like win or loss, and that made it a lot easier in my opinion, but... Cardinals win by at least seven points over the 49ers. Now, San Francisco has looked really, really terrible this season. The line is pretty much right here at about seven points for Vegas. So this one is pretty difficult to predict. The Cardinals did look really, really terrible. Carlos Hyde, I think, is probably going to play. But, man, um, 49ers just do not look good. But you know what? I am going to say false on this one, actually, because I think that the 49ers can 
hold the Cardinals offense in check. The Cardinals offense, other than the first drive against the Cowboys last week, did not look good. 49ers defense isn't particularly good either. In fact, they're kind of bad, to be honest, but that's the best point on their team. I think the 49ers defense is pretty much in line with Dallas is maybe a, a slight bit better. So if they can hold them in line, I think that maybe they won't get blown out in this one. So hopefully they can get that done. Now, Carson Palmer having no interceptions. This is funny because I don't know how many quarterbacks that you could do a prop like this for and have it be almost 50-50. I mean, really. Um, Carson Palmer just throws a ton of picks. Now, if he was going to throw one per week, it would be 16 on the year. I know he, I'm pretty sure he threw 16 or more last year, but I'm still going to say no on this one just because I, predicting that a guy is going to throw an interception, in my opinion, against a mediocre defense, I don't think is the best option. So we'll choose false on that one. Now we're down here getting closer to the end, at least. All right, so we've got Raiders at the Broncos. The Raiders down by two is what it's predicting here. So I, who do I think is going to win this one? I think the Broncos are going to get this one done. The Raiders looked really, really trash last week on offense, like super, super trash. So Broncos win by at least two points. I think that the Broncos are going to win by more than two points. We're getting down here. We almost are going to have to switch some of these over from falses to trues. So we do get that one as well. We're going to choose the Broncos are going to win by two or more. So, all right. Raiders at Broncos. Khalil Mack having a sack. Ugh. If he has a sack every game, that puts him on pace for 16. That's pretty unlikely. But the Broncos O-line is really not very good. Ugh. And he's done pretty well against them, if I remember correctly. I do think they're going to have to to pass quite a bit as well. So I am going to actually choose true for this one. So we're, we've got like eight falses left or seven falses left. So we're going to have to switch some of those over. So let's choose a uh, false and change it over to a true. We'll do that a couple of times here just real quickly so that we can make sure that we have enough of those. We'll do it like three times. Um, I, I kind of wish that they would make it so that you could just choose true or false. I think it's so weird that you have to do it with a card like this, but you know, it's not the end of the world, but it does make it so that we make mistakes from time to time. I wish that you could shift it from true to false as well so that you don't have to stick with what you choose. Cause I do think it's kind of annoying to have to wait until Sunday morning to actually have all the information on inactives and things like that. And those things change a lot. Imagine right now, if I told you for some reason that Russell Wilson wasn't going to play. Do you still think the Seahawks are going to win by at least 13? I don't think so. I really don't think so. So um, anyway, though, the Colts on the road against the Seahawks. Seahawks offense has looked absolutely terrible, but uh, I don't know. 13 is such a huge number, dude. Uh, for a team that doesn't score that many points like Seattle hasn't, I I'm going to go ahead and say false. I, I don't think that this game is going to be competitive, but 13 points is such a huge gap, man. That it really is. For, for a team that doesn't score a lot of points, I'm, I got to go false there. I have to go false. So Colts at Seahawks, Jacoby Brissett having 200 passing yards and no picks. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Like, uh, Jacoby Brissett could very well throw for 200 yards, and he could very well throw for no interceptions, but both of them, nah. Oh, wait, I just, dude, as I'm reading that, of course, dude, I'm like not, I, I don't understand. I'm, I'm retarded right now. You guys are watching this video probably laughing your ass off. I just messed that one up too. I'm, I'm beyond worried. I got to read it closer. I have to read it closer. Jimmy Graham having seven or more receptions or one touchdown. Man, Jimmy Graham having seven or more catches or a touchdown. I got to go true on that one. I think he'll be able to do that. Got to go true. Got to go true. Man, I am so, like, beyond words for how pathetic I am at reading these things and, like, paying close attention to it. That's bad, dude. That's really bad. My age is showing. <laughs> Seahawks defense having two or more sacks. Hmm. Seahawks defense having two or more sacks. Why does that have... Oh, that was weird. Why did it have the Redskins on it? Seahawks defense having two or more sacks. I am going to say yes, just because I think that they'll be able to confuse Jacoby Brissett and he'll end up taking some sacks. So yeah, we'll go true on that one. Let's see here. We might have to switch some, over, some more falses over to trues as well. All right. Chiefs at, or Redskins at Chiefs. Chiefs win by at least seven points. Now the Chiefs have been like the hottest team in the league so far this season. 
Uh, let's take a look at the Vegas odds here. I have it up on my other screen here. They're a nine-point favorite in some, seven-point on the dot in a lot of them, too. Damn. Uh, what do you do here? What do you do? Kansas City by seven over the Redskins. I'm going to say true on that one, so we're going to have to go up here and change a false to a true. And we're getting close to the end here. And if you guys do enjoy these, let me know in the comment section below. Hopefully, you guys don't have mistakes like I do picking them because it would be so great right now if I could change those back because I don't mean to have them the way that I do. Chiefs win by at least seven points. We're going to go true on this one as well. All right. Last couple of true falses here. We're almost down. We're almost over. All right. Ryan Kerrigan having a sack on Alex Smith. In this offense, I am going to go false on this one. I do think Ryan Kerrigan is very good, but, I mean, the, the pace would be 16 sacks. I don't think he's that good. And Kansas City has been pretty good. Alex Smith gets the ball out relatively quickly. They don't take a lot of sacks as a team, so I got to go false there. Tyreek Hill having 100 combined rushing and receiving yards. Man, I, I think that Tyreek Hill is going to have a decent game here. I know a lot of people just look at it and they're like, well, Josh Norman's going to be covering him. Obviously, that's going to be false. Well, it's not necessarily true because Tyreek Hill actually doesn't play uh, out on out wide every single time. And they actually move him over all over the field. He'll play on the left. He'll play on the right. He'll play in the slot. Josh Norman only plays his one spot. He is not going to shadow Tyreek Hill unless he completely changes everything that he normally does. I don't see that happening. But Tyreek Hill getting 100 combined rushing and receiving yards. I am going to say false just because that's a pretty high number. And yes, he's the kind of guy that, of course, could do that. But just chances are that nobody's really going to do that. Tyree Kill, again, could certainly do it. But I'm just going to say false on that. I, I really don't think many guys you could predict are going to get 100 yards in a game. That's just very, very difficult. Justin Houston getting one or more sacks here on Kirk Cousins. I'm actually going to say true on this one because Justin Houston is a freaking beast. Wait, hold on one second. Justin Houston's going to be up against Trent Williams. Damn, I was going to say true on that because I know that Kirk Cousins holds onto the ball too uh, too long sometimes, but he's probably just going to be up against Trent Williams. I'm going to say false on this one, guys. I am going to go ahead and say false on this one. So, uh, yeah, Trent Williams should be able to keep him at least in check. And there you have it, guys. That is the whole thing. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully, you guys learned a little bit from it. And uh, uh, hopefully, you didn't make the same mistakes that I did. But Hopefully, we we're able to get like the 18 correct picks. That would be freaking awesome. I, I would love to get myself an 89 or more or o higher overall player. Now, I doubt that's going to happen because I definitely made a couple of mistakes in there. But anyway, guys, thanks again. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you drop a like on it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I will talk to you guys again soon.